One thing I was not really prepared for this year in terms of NaNoWriMo was just all of the emotional ups and downs over the course of the month. Last year, I pretty much said, you know what? I have no idea if I can write a novel. I have no idea if any of the prose fiction I write is even gonna be any good. I have no expectation that anybody is going to even read this prose fiction or I just needed some sort of project that I was just doing for myself because I wanted to and not for any other reason. This year, however, I had set a lot of tough goals with the expectation that whatever I was writing, I was writing with the goal of publishing. Knowing that to successfully self-publish fantasy novels means committing to at least a three book series with each book released six months apart, let's say. Hey guys, it's Deborah, and this is the vlog of week four of Remo and the end is nigh, the end is nigh guys. I can taste it, I am so close. I was not exactly feeling upbeat this time last week. And in fact, I was feeling pretty low all the way until the end of Tuesday, which was day 22, three. Hang on, hang on. Today, today is Thursday, so yeah, day 22. It is day 19 of NaNoWriMo. Yesterday was an absolute disaster for me. I think I've written the absolute worst things I have written. Yeah, let's just forget yesterday happened. The block that I had run into with my plot was just not resolving itself. That was even worse than the last couple of days. Oh, it killed me right now. I have this thinking feeling that something is deeply, deeply, deeply wrong with my outline. I didn't know how to fix it. I am completely giving up on writing any more new words today. I have opened a wiki and I am going to transfer all of my world building notes over into the wiki because this document is currently driving me insane. It was an all in one document. There was market research thrown in there. There was outline stuff and there was world building stuff. It was just all over the place. The reason I chose a wiki is pretty simple. It's because Brandon Sanderson uses a wiki. Specifically, he uses Wikipad, which is an open source piece of software. However, the user interface is just a little outdated. And I don't know about you guys, I used to think that this was a shallow thing to think, but I've decided in my 30s that, you know what? I do appreciate aesthetics. I am not saying that just because something has a pleasing aesthetic means that it is automatically good user interface design, but something where there has not been a lot of effort put into the user interface generally doesn't translate into a good user experience. The best thing about using a wiki for me is that everything is organized contextually rather than in a linear format. The further I get into the story, the more I'm having to refer back to things in other chapters or scrolling through this massive Google document trying to find, you know, what is it that I had specified about using magic in these specific circumstances. Now I'm just like, I go to my wiki, I type something in the search bar, it brings up, you know, all of the search results that match and I go and read the article and if, you know, I have a thought about linking it somewhere else or I want to expand on the point, I just go in, do some markup, create a new little article in the wiki and off I go. Everything's linked. Everything is in its place. I don't have to add to the cognitive load of my brain, which is already struggling with how to plot out the individual beats of the scene or what specific word do I want to use here so that I can develop the character further as well as describe the setting effectively. I have been really happy with Tiddly Wiki. There are some drawbacks to using Tiddly Wiki though. Specifically, this particular software is very flexible in the sense that the whole wiki, the whole wiki is just a single HTML file with some JavaScript in it. So you can install it anywhere as long as you have a web browser that's JavaScript enabled, it will work perfectly. You can even put it on a USB drive. However, when you hit the save button in this wiki, what it actually does is download a current copy of the web page. You have to go and find that downloaded file, overwrite the original file you were working on in order to make sure that it is always the latest version. There are some plugins and other services for getting around this and making it a little bit more seamless. I have not personally tried any of them except the Google Drive one, except something is broken with the script. So the auto update to Google Drive doesn't really work. Everything else about the wiki has been a great experience so far and I'm probably going to continue with it. I have the feeling that if I ever get to the point where this becomes massive, I might be in trouble just because like the page is going to be a little bit slow to load. 
That said, I'm not writing the Cosmere, so I'm not gonna have a wiki that is 400,000 words long, so I figure I should be alright. Once I'd done that, I went back to try and tackle the issue of where the hell was my second act going? Oh my goodness. The more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what? I have two options. And because I like to explore all of my options fully before I commit to any one of them, I decided that I would try and outline both of these options. This template by Shalon of Learning to Grow is actually a combination of the Save the Cat framework plus the Mice Quotient Try Fail Cycle. What was really hard to see from my outline as I had it was that the whole thing was really unwieldy and I couldn't see it all at once. So when I was trying to untangle all of my plot issues, I decided to give this template a go. And while I really like it overall, there are a couple of things about it that don't quite work for me. But this is kind of where I got to in terms of what I originally had in my head for all of book one. What really jumped out at me were how big, how big the story actually was, despite my original intention to keep it to 75,000 words. What's ridiculous about it is this is the scaled down version of what I was originally planning. Oh, why? Just why? That's when the light bulb switched on and a part of my brain went, crazy idea, but hear me out. What if you took act one and made that the book? And then what you've got planned for act two and act three, you make those books two and three of a series. So I would know exactly where the story is going. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to write any more words in chapter 11, which is just a hot mess. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a plan. So yeah, I cheated. But when I rejig things and put the end of chapter seven as the end of the entire book, that felt like it worked. Of all the sequences I have written today, the sequence in chapter seven remains my personal favorite because I felt it was a really powerful, emotionally strong sequence. There's a lot of subtext in there and the end of that sequence has such a bittersweet gut punch to it that I was like, yes, you know what? This is the scene I wanna end this book on because the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do after reading that is go and pre-order book two. So fingers crossed, that is the plan. Whether or not actual readers will agree with me remains to be seen, but I have a good feeling about this. After rebuilding my outline, the first thing I wanted to do was just to reassess and get a sense of whether or not all of my original goals were still achievable. Based on my calculations, it was still totally doable. So that is what I'm gonna to aim to do by the end of NaNoWriMo. After five solid days of a really poor writing streak, I am finally on an upward trajectory again. Between now and the end of November, the most important sequence I have to write is the new Act 2, which is basically going to be a mini murder mystery. Oh, Nano is just making me write all sorts of stuff that I just normally do not read whatsoever. Yet here I am with a romance arc and with a murder mystery in my fantasy novel. So, I guess I've just been super inspired by Caitlin from my writing group. She has just published her debut novel, The Night City. It's an urban fantasy about psychic detectives and you can get it on Amazon right now. I will put the link in the description below so you can go check it out. So when I got stuck last week and then a whole bunch of personal stuff just came up in the form of legal matters that I can't talk about and my internet completely dying. I'm so sorry guys for the internet gremlins. And in all honesty, the legal stuff did not make me as stressed as losing my internet. My entire writing habit loop is designed around live streaming. I was freaking out. No, no, no. It was just the worst. And I felt really bad about letting everybody down. Fortunately, the internet gremlins have been slain at last so it should be smooth sailing from here on but thank you so much to everybody who has dropped into one of my live streams for taking all of the dropouts and replacement streams in stride and for understanding when I had to cancel an entire day's worth of streams so thank you guys I really appreciate you and you are the reason why I have passed 70k words this week. That end is definitely in sight. I have my eyes on it. The fact that it is now a question of 
when and not if is just so good and such a huge relief. Wherever you are in your NaNoWriMo journey, I hope that you have learned as much as I have this past month. You may not have gotten any words down yesterday or the day before, and you may not get any words down today, but the possibility of the words coming is always there. But if you don't provide yourself with the opportunity, then you won't be able to seize those possibilities. I'm gonna do one more video just to wrap up my entire NaNoWriMo 2021 journey and to reflect on whether or not I've achieved those goals I set at the very beginning. But until then, I'm gonna put a different awesome video here for you guys to watch.